Okay, for you long awaiting people that have been waiting for this setup three, I'm gonna release this version because there's a tweak to setup nine that I want to get out. Um, however, setup three is definitely not ready. It's got some tweaking to do, but I've just found out today that the programmer will be gone for the rest of the week and he won't be back till next week. So um, I guess we're at a point now where I think um, we're okay to, for sampling, but um, again, beta testing. And I'll give you a little quick uh, uh, demonstration on how we have to do this. So in any event, without further ado, let me go to strategies real quick and let's talk about the, the setup number nine. The last piece of the puzzle on setup number nine is in number nine was in group A, which was the entry trigger. And this last piece here was invalidate the setup from reversal bar. Because if you remember, we want to keep it really tight to the reversal bar. We don't want to get too far away from it. So I've got set, I've got it set for three right now. Um, I'm not quite sure what the lucky number is. Maybe it's two, maybe it's three. I need to find out some more things on measurement, but this is what we have right now. And, and we could tweak it, but that was the last piece of the puzzle for the 9A. In this case, I'm going to, now from this point forward, I'm going to talk about setup 3A, which is the one that I've been working on, as you guys know. So coming back to the top, I'm going to first and foremost, turn off VWAP and my no, um, you know, my, um, my zone, no trade zone. I'm going to turn off high of the day and the no trade zone there, all that business. And then also set up four, which also has a no, I'm, I'm not going to plot that. Um, only because, now I would do this in a real market, but I don't do it now, you know, while we're just a market replay. Only because I want to get more trades just to kind of show you this real quick. I'm not going to plot, uh, you know, any moving averages. It doesn't matter. And then also, um, I'm not making any um, um, moving averages uh, orientated. So um, let's just kind of just run through this on some market replay. Okay, so we're at the beginning of the market. So let me run through this little orientation here on the color scheme. There's, uh, you've got the, the typical, you know, you've got the green, which is solid, and then you've got the light green, as I call it, mint. Just means it's weakening, and then you've got transparent, things don't match up. Then you've got the red, which is, you know, obviously down, and then you've got a transparent again. And I think at some point here, you're going to have some mint, or there's some pink. So you can see it's red, and then it gets a little weaker, and then it gets uh, transparent, then it gets uh, stronger, and then it gets transparent again. Then it switches to green, and then it kind of gets a little weaker with the mint, and then it goes transparent, and then it switches this way. So again, I don't have um, you know moving averages on. I don't have all kinds of VWAP and all that business on. I'm just trying to show you the, the platform of it. Now, ultimately in the future, it's not there yet, but ultimately in the future, we're not going to be trading on this big chart. This is a 21.3 chart in Enzaranko. We're going to be trading on a smaller chart because we can see the little pivots and the curves and the ups and downs and all that stuff. But we are ultimately trading from this one. So keeping that in mind for right now, because the automation part of it isn't done anyway, um, and there's some other things that aren't, there's a lot of things that aren't done on it. So until that comes, we're just, I'm kind of giving you a little head start on it. Um, ultimately, you will be able to do the automatic mode and then it will just do it you know, ultimately uh, when it's done. However, we don't have that point right now. We have to start somewhere and that's manual. So we can do it manually. I'll turn it off, pause. So we're on manual mode right now. And what you're going to start seeing here as, as time goes on is you're going to see entry zones. For those of you who've been around a little while, um, those are the entry zones. And uh, these are just reversal bars up here. I also have my target zones on, but those are separate indicators. But that just tells me where the reversal bar is going to come in at. So needless to say, and this, by the way, is just the price line indicator from, uh, you know, Ninja. Just tells me where the bid ask is and whatnot. So in any event, what we need to do is there's your entry zone. And there's where we're looking for a short. However, you can't you can't just go short right now. Now, again in the automatic mode you won't have to worry about it because it's going to do it but in the manual mode if you if you want to do it on sim or playback you can for practice i wouldn't do this on live yet because i've been doing this for long enough i could do it but you know there's some things you got to watch out for so needless to say is you want to wait until you get up to the zone and don't prematurely do it because it's going to trip quickly so 
wait until you get there. And uh, there is a uh, arrow that will plot when you see a touch. And let me show you those right now since we're talking about it. in the settings under group, um, I think it's six, which is the plots. Group six. No, maybe it's group four. Sorry, group four. Group four is the is the alert plot and seeing that that's what it is. And of course, they're stuck at the bottom and it's right here. Uh, plot setup three, touch arrows and termination square. So you're going to see what those are in just a second. So in any event, you've got the zone, but you don't have a touch. So you don't want to do anything yet. Once you get a touch, when the price goes up there, there you go. That is a touch in the zone. And so actually from this point forward, now you could hit enter on a down bar. Now, and you could see it here on a smaller chart when you get the down bar because it's based on this chart here. So when you get a down bar, you're going to be short and you know, there's nothing else to deal with at that point. If, however, this is where the important manual part comes. If this continues to go up and it, you see the termination square, you have to turn this off manually because it's the manual mode. Now, it'll automatically do that when it gets too far away. It'll invalidate in group A. Uh, you'll see some things in there about invalidation when it gets too far, blah, blah, blah. But needless to say is that, so you got to keep your finger on the trigger here because if you see a termination square, then you need to turn this off because you don't want it anymore. On the other hand, if you get in, well, then now you just, you know, go from there. Now, I'm going to give you the template, which handles all the stops and the management, which I think I, I feel pretty comfortable with. Um, however, you could change them, uh, you know, intra-trade and you can move them around. Um, I would not kill and delete the stop for sure because it's got a lot of stop management on there. However, if you feel that, you know, the market might run, you can go ahead and rather move the target or just delete it altogether. It's fine. You don't even need a target. Um, I don't use it. I would say probably... 70, 80% of the time, I just delete it all together. And sometimes I don't even have it on. So it just, the stop basically becomes my target. Um, so in any event, in this pace, I have my target set for 50 ticks and I have my target zone on at a 25. Now you don't need to have this. Um, it's not necessary, but my theory is, is that I'll just, you know, especially at the beginning of the day, I just take a little bit uh, just to kind of bank something. Then I can kind of feel bold depending on how the market moves and go from there. So in any event, I've got this on, I've got my down end, so I'm going to play it. And so I'm going to put my finger on the trigger here and right there is the entry trigger. Now this entry trigger is going to follow it up and it's going to get you a better fill. And it should, you know, it's going to chase this uh, bars up and until again, as long as you're getting a better fill, that's, that's perfect. Um, as soon as you get a down bar and breach this and you have to breach it with the, you know, the bid ask, depending on which way you're going, but you have to breach it with the bid ask. And that's why I like to see it. Once you've breached that, you're going to be in, and then this will turn off automatically. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, there is a, a setting in there that you could leave it on continuously, but uh, I definitely would not advise that. Um, so it will turn off as soon as the order is taken. So let's continue on. And I'm looking for a termination square. And if it goes up, you know, much higher. Now, now here's the other thing. Let me pause this real quick. Here's the other thing with the termination squares. I've noticed we're not done with the termination squares. So you got to be there. Sometimes they're going a little premature. You're never going to know that. Um, now, unfortunately, until he gets back next week, we're not going to be able to play with that. So there are going to be some early termination squares that would make you terminate but the way i look at it is if you want to play with this you could play with it and you know kind of get familiar with it and if you terminate a little too early and you don't get into trade you know no big deal you just take the next one it's no, no problem um if it were reversed and it would not not show you a termination square where it should well then i probably wouldn't be sending this out but since it's uh you just be in less trades i guess so in any event um there we go and now we're off to the races and this is my and a target zone that I have here. And again, you can go on the web page and look into that if you want to know what that's about. But again, you can, you know, move this around and do what you want to do with it. Um, and I have my retracement set for eight ticks. So anytime we get into this area, it'll keep going down until I hit, hit my, you know, target altogether or any kind of retracement of eight ticks, boom, then I'm hit, then I'm done. Then I'm out because it's real tight. So anyway, so let's see what happens. So the worst case, okay, so I have my trade management in here. And if you hear 
if you hear an entry and then instantly a cha-ching, meaning that it's moving, that's because it's found to pivot. I don't want to get involved in all that, but moral of the story is it's looking in the pre-trade, pre-execution, and it's finding a pivot, and it found one, and so then it's going to come back to this location. So my default stop is 34 ticks, but I would say a lot of the times it pops down a lot sooner than that. Um, as it should. And if we get out, let's say it comes back up and pops you out. I don't have a problem with that because if things are still set up and it comes back down again, it'll just put you right back in again. On the other hand, if it keeps going up, well, then you're glad you got out early. So I, you know, again, I'll pay the few bucks on commissions. It's, it's worth it to me. So in any event, let's uh, go on. So th this is really it. I want to, I could probably go fast forward because I don't care what it does. Um, I want to show you the termination square. Okay, so how much heat do you have to take on that? You know, um, here, let me put on my entry there. Well, it's not going to show until the end of the day. And, okay, but uh, okay, so you see what happened is I, I got down there and I hit my target. I must have come, come back just a smidge. Yeah, right there. Look at that. That's the trumper stop. Um, I got popped out and then it took off. So anyway, it is. But again, I want to kind of protect myself. So we took four four ticks of heat on that trade. So, I mean, that's kind of really what I'm going at. I'm not looking for, um, you know, 30, 40, you know, 50 ticks of, of, uh, of stop. That's, that's, I would just rather get out and get back in again. So uh, needless to say, if I didn't have a target, but, you know, that's here and there, we'll, we'll come to that later. Right now, I'm just uh, doing doing this. Um, so let's find another, one. oh, incidentally then too, since I got you here, um, I think I'm going to change this to, to less bars, but needless to say, what's going to happen is, is that this is your initial one. If you don't get that one, it has to pull back to get it. You know, you have to get that arrow. You got to get that touch. And then you can see this one didn't touch. It, it, it uh, never came back. So therefore you don't have an arrow. Well, this one, it did. It created a new zone because it follows it down. It created a new zone. And in this time, it came back and it touched. So if you didn't get in on this one, you could have gotten in on that one. And you probably would have been in, you know, somewhere around here. Um, and these will start, you know, trailing down, um, but they will disappear. If there's no touch, they disappear. Only when they are, only when you see an arrow of a touch, that will, they will stay on the chart for historical reasons and for evaluations. So they were there at one time, but we just moved at 10 times speed and, and, and they just disappeared. Here is the termination square. Now you notice we're in a weaker condition. So hence termination square. We're not gonna be dealing with these kind of trades on a, on a, with, with a termination. So we're done. So you're not, you know, now we just have to wait for the next to the next zone. Now there is an audible alert on here that I have. It's got a little chirp and then it says, you know, up or down, entry zone, up or down, whatever it says. Um, because that way you don't have to stare at the chart. If you don't have those alerts, um, you get one, download them on the page and get them. I think if I'm not mistaken, they might've downloaded in with the, with the, with the install, I, I can't remember if I put those in there or not, but if not, you could download them uh, on the web page or put any tone you want in there. It doesn't really matter. You put any sound you want in there. And again, that's under audible alerts, which is group five. And if you're not familiar with those, you should go, go to the website and look at the video and you know go look into that section. Um, but th those are um, down at the bottom on group five. So uh, without further ado, let's just keep going a little further. Okay, so we got another zone. So you notice these, this zone, I don't know if you saw it fast enough, but it did kind of climb up. It started down here and then went up. Uh, now, again, I don't have moving averages on, so it's going to take a lot of trades. But um, it started moving up. These all disappeared because they didn't do anything. And I'm still waiting for the touch with the arrow. So let me slow it down just a smidge and see if I can get oh, maybe a little bit more. I'll try to stop. Yeah, well, okay. So what happened is, is that, yeah, I wish I would have gone a little slower, but in any event, let me explain it. So it's coming down and you get the touch and you turn on the up bar. Okay. But the, but you need the confirmation. So if it, if it would have gone up, you would have and breached your entry trigger, which then, you know, uh, shows once you've breached that entry trigger, then, then it would be in the trade on the long. However, if you notice that it, it came down and never went back up, so you didn't get your confirmation. So 
in my case, I'm manually, you have to cancel it. When you see that trigger, you're like, no more. It's just short-lived and that's it. I don't want any more. So you turn this uh, up bar off. Um, in the auto mode, you don't have to worry about that. It's all automatic. So now we've reversed back to our short position. So let me slow it down maybe. I mean, it just gets so, so slow. Um, I'll see if I can get a touch here. Uh, okay. Now, if you want to jump the gun, that's your business. But I would say wait. There we go. So, all right, here we go. So here's a tight, there's a small window of opportunity here. So, I mean, don't, don't think that you, it's just very, and it's by design. So you, you got, you got the touch with the arrow and you would have then at that point said down arrow, but obviously you wouldn't have done that because this is one time speed. You couldn't have done it so fast, but as soon as you saw that termination, you just turn it off. You're done. It's, it's over. Um, and now we're now we're going this way. So let me. Oh, I don't want to turn on yet. I want the touch. So let's get my finger on the trigger and wait for the touch. There's the touch, and there's the termination. So it comes off again. And you see the entry trigger because I I hit the I hit the up bar. It was queued up, ready to go. And had it breached that prior to the termination, then it would have triggered the the order. However, I saw the termination square and I turned it off real quick really quick. And I, I said, you know, done. And again, automatically it's, it would be automatic, but we don't have that logic yet. So that that's coming hopefully within the next couple of weeks. But needless to say, if you want to play with this manually, you have to be quick. So you turn it off and that's it. And in this case, there's another one, but you got a termination. So it's just going to fiddle fart around. So let's see if we can find something that I think you got the idea. I mean, I, I guess I don't have to, I think we're done at this point. I could probably cut it right there. Um, so let me 